So good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming by to, to give us an hour of your time or so. Um, my name is Alex Gonzalez. I am the uh, lead Adobe specialist here at the U of A. And my job is to help people use our software um, for academic, business, and personal reasons. Um, and we're, we're hoping to inspire folks to, to just kind of get out there and create something. Um, so in that vein, what we're going to talk about today is Adobe XD. Has anybody here used XD before? Use a chat, use a thumbs up, or I guess thumbs down if you haven't. <laughs> Got one, cool, the red X. Not yet, we're about to, awesome. So first and foremost, the website I sent you is your asynchronous resource where you will find this exact session recorded and posted here. I usually post it right above the agenda. Um, this website has some basics. It has an explanation of what XD is, and it has a lot of things to help you uh, dive even, even further into XD. So we're just scraping the surface today. I want to kind of demystify it, check out what it's for, what you can do with it. Um, and then give plenty of time for questions. So let's go ahead and jump in. Was everybody able to get the, the assets and open XD? Mm -hmm. I heard, mm -hmm. excellent. Uh, and I will say, um, unlike a lot of the other Adobe applications, the mobile version of XD is just to preview your project. So if you're working on a phone app, you can have it on your phone next to you and you can like preview how it's going to be the user experience, but you can't really design mobile yet on mobile. All right, so XD is a design program. That's uh, most common use is to create user interface and user experience layouts. Um, what it is, is a really powerful tool for being able to explain and plan what you want for your website or web app. It doesn't make the app. So while you can get full functioning previews of them, it's not gonna code it out and let you host it somewhere um, and have users experience it. But it's the perfect tool for wireframing, designing and layout in general to then pass on to your engineers. That being said, people use it for a lot more than just that process, um, they'll use it to just create an, a flyer, um, to create a presentation, to, um, to just plan out, make a board of ideas. So it's kind of this big sandbox that is, in my opinion, pretty fun to use, not as um, intimidating as some of the other programs might be. Um, and so it can do a lot. So let's actually look around a little bit here. Let's delete this. Sorry, sheep. Very cute. So for example, uh, a while back, we sent out some information about our new Adobe license. And Adobe sent me the, um, the marketing assets as an InDesign file that I could go and quickly replace components of with my own university information. And the instructions are right here. So to, mas to edit this master, uh, you will change these parts. And I could put, instead of the call to action being get started, I could say, you know, go cats or something. And anywhere it says get started would get changed in every single version of this tent in space. So this was designed and, and laid out. Oh, I'm gonna hit the mute for everybody. Um, this was designed and laid out entirely in XD you could have done it in Photoshop or in Illustrator, but some of those other functions like replacing entire elements of design and on one page having the different um, outputs, you could do that in Illustrator, but uh, not in Photoshop. So I thought this was a nice example of ways that it's used. And you can see that it's a very large file, um, but it's not a very demanding program. It, it runs pretty fast, even if you have Photoshop and Illustrator documents pasted in there or dropped in there. So here's one example. Let's close this one. In the opposite direction, 
uh, let's do this one first. We have an justice through UX class that designed a, um, they took a court system in Utah, they took their website and their charge was to increase accessibility because it was extremely difficult to navigate, which resulted in people going to jail. Um, so they said, let's let's create a better user experience and design to for equity, for justice. Um, so their first charge was to go and create little profile pages. And everyone in the class opened the same document and worked on it together at the same time. It was really fun to see. Uh, and then they would create, so let's just take one of the professors, they created a who am I, basically a social media profile, right? Um, and that was pretty great. And in this page, they were given design assets, elements over here that they could incorporate into their own little page that they added. So that's pretty fun. Um, while this looks like it's pretty complicated, let's go ahead and jump a little bit further here. That's when they, once they got more and more into XD, they started actually prototyping and redesigning a website and they actually put um, like a chat bot in there that could lead people to different places instead of just having this really difficult to navigate website. So if we were to see, I'm gonna zoom in over here. We can see this design. This is the flow, the home page, and then where certain links might take you. If I were to go to prototype, we can see you start to actually create the navigation of tapping this takes you here, this takes you back. And it feels at at this overview level, it seems like, holy cow, how did they do all that? But it's it's clicking and dragging and choosing. It's it's uh it really is a lot of what you see is what you're gonna get. And then you can take it even further. So that's super fun. We're not going to go nuts like that today, <laughs> but I like to share these projects. Um, are there any questions so far? I can't imagine, but as a friendly reminder, uh, as your questions arise, please ask them. This is, this is very informal. Um, okay, so when we open XD, we'll be greeted with this splash page. And while you can choose a common uh, size, you can also just enter a custom size as well. And you can change it whenever you want to, because as you saw, your XD document actually has multiple, what we call artboards within it that can have different dimensions. So you don't have to think too hard, but let's just say we're going to, um, one of my favorite ways to learn is to just recreate something that already exists and kind of get a taste for the process. Um, so we're, we're going we're gonna to recreate an, uh, an Instagram page on an iPhone. So I'll choose an iPhone 13 Pro here. Um, if you click this drop down, you can find other common smart devices. And it's also used to make regular web pages too. It's not just for um, mobile. So you can make pretty nice web page portfolios. It's, it's something that's fun to have students do that is really satisfying. They get something that they can share um, with each other, with the class, without having to hard code anything. All right, so here is XD. I'm gonna open this up a little bit. And XD has three design spaces, if you will. It has, well, it has workspaces, not design. It has design where you actually drop in elements, text, images, anything else, and you, you lay them all out. It has prototype, which is where you go and define interactions and paths. And it has share, which is the way to send it out with other people. And you can create a hosted version that lets people explore the, all the interactions that you've created, which is nice. Uh, hosted by Adobe, Not you can't like make it alexswebsite.com and be done. Um, so we're going to start into the design. We're going to go to prototype, and then we're going to share out at the end. So before I get any further in here, the left-hand side are our mouse tools. We have the move tool that lets you select an element, an artboard, 
Sorry, I heard a weird noise. Um, or anything that you're doing, and you can move them around or resize, transform them in many ways. We have our shape tools, rectangle, ellipse, and triangle. Those are just design elements. Same thing with the line tool. If you're brave, you can use your pen tool and Bezier curves to create unique shapes like this really cool blob I just made. <laughs> um, so here I can grab that with the, is it called the move tool or the selection tool in XD? It's called select tool, sorry. I, doesn't matter that much, but we'll delete it. The type tool to add text, keyboard shortcut for that is T. For the selection tool, it's V. The rectangles R. I think the ellipse is, oh, it's E, it's not L. Polygon and line. So it's not a triangle tool, I, I, I lied, because the triangle tool can actually make, um, is this the one that I want? Oh, it doesn't do it there. It can make multiple sides. So uh, that's over here in the properties. I got ahead of myself. All right. Uh, and then the artboard tool this is the second to last tool where you can create, and you will need to if you are having a website that takes you to other places. What you do is have it go from one artboard to another artboard. So if I wanted this to go from the profile grid to a single image view, I would want to go ahead and draw a second artboard. Or if you notice, when I click the artboard tool on the right-hand side, I have those preset. So I could choose 13 Pro and I'll put it right next to it. Um, I'll keep two. And then the zoom tool, which I don't really use very much because I like keyboard shortcuts. So I will share my keyboard shortcuts to navigate the space. Um, Command or Control minus to zoom out. Command or Control plus to zoom in. Command or control zero to fit to screen, whatever you have selected. Um, and then spacebar activates the hand tool that lets you click and drag around. So uh, if you've used Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, I think even Express, these are the same keyboard shortcuts, kind of. That's a really nice consistency. Unlike the selection tool that's called the move tool in some apps and the selection tool in other ones, <laughs> which is why I'm always wondering. Um, as you select the tool, you'll have different options show up in your properties and also sometimes in the asset area. But this next part here is a way to look at what you have in your project. Um, right now there's nothing, but let's say I have a an ellipse that is red. If we look at colors, if I click the plus, it's going to look at my project and add the colors that I have. And then when I click a color, it will select everything that is that color. And then I can go quickly and replace all reds with, you know, purple. So this asset panel is a really helpful part of your page as well. Um, that's at the very bottom, and sometimes I lose these. So right now we're in our assets or libraries. Underneath that, we can actually see the layers of our document, which I believe we will see two artboards and one layer. So here's iPhone 13 Pro, and it has an ellipse. If I click back, we can see I have two artboards. So this is an important spot to kind of check out. Uh, you can rename your artboards here. I just right clicked and hit rename. Um, really, really a good idea to practice good naming conventions and organization because your document will get big and difficult to navigate if you don't. Um, you can also just double click the artboard and I can name this profile. I think that's what we're going to do profile and single image view. So I can do that. And then at the very bottom, we have plugins, which are really um, a really a cool part about XD is that third party people can, developers can create plugins for you to use and save you a bunch of time. Some of the public plugins are just icons. So while I'm in here, you can see I have, let's go back. 
I have icons for design. I have lorem ipsum that lets me fill placeholder text in case I don't know what I'm going to put in there. And I have quick mockup that uh, gives you little website mockups. So let's go to icons for design and let's search for iPhone. Oh, no, that's an iPhone preview. Uh, so here I can find, for example, my full battery. And I can click it, and I can have my full battery here in the top instead of trying to design it. I'm pretty sure they have one that's just the full top menu. I think if we search iOS. Um, all right. Well, let's not lose too much time doing this. We can add that later. But uh, there's a lot of really fun plugins to play with to help you work faster. So that's that left-hand side. The Oh, yeah, definitely get, um, maybe go and explore the plugins that you want. I'm surprised you need admin for that because you can go to plugins in the top and browse and go and it'll open up the, I guess it's because it's through Creative Cloud. You can see all these plugins, calendars, auto grid, um, lots of good stuff. There's one that's like, these people are not real or something like that. And it's it's um, 3D generated faces that you can use instead of worrying about model releases and things like that. And they look they look very real, but they're people that don't exist. Um, we'll worry about that later. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in libraries. We talked about our design space. We can navigate it, it's huge. We can have multiple artboards, grab them with our move tool. Um, our elements can be on an artboard or off to the side. They will only be displayed on a screen if they're on an artboard. So um, that's going to take us to the right hand side. If we look at the play button, it'll pop up a little preview window. And right now, this is what my users will experience a white screen, uh, regardless of which artboard I have selected. If I put a purple dot on it, now they're experiencing a purple dot. Uh, it doesn't scroll or anything like that because we haven't done anything. Pretty good purple dot. OK, uh, let's bring that back. So when you have an element or an asset selected, the properties area is going to be where you're going to make most of your changes. Um, you can transform, which is to rotate, scale, and um, transform itself, which is to change the dimensions. Um, you can do that here if you know exactly how many pixels. Oh, this circle is supposed to be 30 pixels wide by 30 pixels tall. Um, the X and Y are the actual position. There's a rotation, and then there's some uh, mirror or flip, flip vertical, flip horizontal. And actually, I don't know what these are. Oh, you can create scroll groups, which we're not going to get into that yet. Um, so I can move this around. This is also where I can see uh, the appearance itself. So if I want something to have transparency, that's where you drop the opacity. You can choose the fill color. You can also choose if it has a border or not. I don't want one. Uh, and you can give shadows, inner, outer, or even create a, a blur for it, which is cool. Um, this is also where you can define when scrolling occurs, which is how you create an actual navigational website on a phone. So let's go ahead and start actually making something. Um, like I said, we're just going to recreate something that already exists. So in our uh, assets folder, we're going to grab the profile grid and drop it here. It's a little bit big. And if we look at our preview now, like this is what people would see. <laughs> it's not great. So let's go ahead and shrink it down. We're just going to, I'm just using the move tool and I'm just going to move it and scale it down until it fits in there. 
Um, so this is a nice way to practice because then what you do, you place, you're basically tracing, right? Uh, you place what you're going to trace and then you're going to right click and lock it, which then you, you can't click and move it by accident. I actually also like, which maybe I should, before you lock it, unlock it, I'm going to drop the opacity to 50%. That way it's not clashing, maybe even less. Uh, okay, lock. Let's go ahead and do it twice. Let's grab the single image screenshot and drop it in there too. Zoom way out. And you'll feel it, I mean, maybe you don't feel it, but you'll see it snap when it's the same dimensions, um, which is something really nice that XD does. It has smart guides and snapping. So smart guides will let me know when I am centered. So that blue line means I'm centered vertically. And now there it says I'm centered horizontally. Maybe the opposite. Okay, so again, opacity down and lock. And Let's start with the single image one so that we kind of, that one's a little bit quicker to, to visualize. So I'm gonna click. So if we look here, we have a few shapes. We have a circle, a square, a rectangle. We have a badge, a heart on all those good things. Um, so let's drop a square with an image so we can see how adding images works. So I'll grab my rectangle tool R is the keyboard shortcut. As you draw your rectangle, if you hold shift, it creates a perfect square, which I think that's what this is. Yep. If we look at our properties, it has a border. We don't want one, so I'm gonna uncheck. The fill is up to you if you would like to keep it or not. Um, it's going to disappear when we put an image in there anyway. And then I'm gonna take, there's a folder called repeat grid, which we're gonna see how to quickly create, recreate something. Um, but we're gonna open that and just grab the first image or whichever one you want. Uh, in this case, it's these prickly pears and drag them into your rectangle. And what XD will do is mask it inside of whatever shape you drew. So just so we know if this was a triangle, and I dropped the shape in there, it would fit inside the triangle. Now, if I want to select which part of my image shows, like if I wanna move the image inside of the mask, you double click and you'll see the grayed out area is your full image. So you could make it bigger, you can move it around. If you move it too much, you'll end up with a hole in your shape. So make sure it stays within the rectangle. Are there any questions so far? I think you can also rotate here. Uh, I thought you could. I think you have to rotate the actual shape. Yeah, you do. Boink. So you rotate the mask, not the actual image. Um, if we look at the profile, we've got a circle with an image and a, and a border, and then we have a name. So let's grab a circle which the keyboard shortcut is E, I think, ellipse. Hold shift, drag that out. I'm gonna press V, go to the move tool. Looks about right. It does have a stroke, but this is too big. So if I go to properties and I change the size from one to 0.3, maybe that's a little small. Yeah, maybe 0.4. Uh, and then I can put it right on top. And we're gonna put our profile picture in there. I really like that sheep. There we go. I'm gonna drag it in there. I'm gonna double click, make it bigger. And adorable. So you would keep doing this. So if I grant add the text, Adobe Arizona. So I'm gonna press T on the keyboard and just click Adobe Arizona. Um, now if I look on my, excuse me. Sorry. If I look at my properties, I can find the text size. So I could click there and just arrow down to different sizes. I can find the font and the font style, which it looks like it was kind of a, a medium. That looks pretty good. Grab my move tool. 
and we can kind of compare, make it smaller. All right, we're not going to lose any sleep over them not being exactly the same size. We'll just put it right there. Um, let's say we want to make this back arrow. That could be something we do with the pen tool. So I would grab the pen tool, click here, come out, and then come back and line up my ending points. And then I'm still in the pen tool because it likes you to make closed shapes, but I don't want to. So I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard. And now that's its own little carrot, if you will. I could have also just done a, a greater than or less than sign too, but you know, might as well explore the tools. So I'm going to go back to the move tool, make the border bigger. Let's see them next to each other. And then what I'm going to do is round those edges by going down here and choosing a rounded cap. Hopefully you can see on my screen where my mouse is. And it's not exactly the same, but I just want to say it's pretty good for now. So we're starting to make our page. Let's see what this looks like when somebody previews it. Um, and if we wanted to, well, I wonder, let me see. Let's go to layers, single image. So this is a nice way when you go to your layers, you can click on the eye on the right, right side of it to hide that basically tracing that, that guide image that we put. And we can see our design so far is a profile picture, username, and an image. Any questions coming up? Any thoughts? OK. Now, what I want to do is I don't want to just sit here and recreate the whole thing. Um, because as, as I, I mean, I think it's fun to do. I just want to get and show you a few more features that go into recreating. So um, let's go ahead and add the boost post button because I want to show you how to make a rounded rectangle. And I'll show you how to make a heart too. So boost post. And also how to select a color. So we'll grab our rectangle. And we'll draw a rectangle. It's the same size. Let's go ahead and move it over. If you go ahead and turn off your border because it doesn't have one, uh, it kind of disappears. So let's go ahead and choose this fill color. So with this rectangle selected, if you look at the eyedropper, that lets you click and drag on any color in your area and apply it. So if I grab the eyedropper and then move it over to the blue, now it's the same blue, which is nice. If I want to round these edges, our shape has actually these little inner widgets that you can click and pull in to create a rounded shape, which is really, really nice. Um, and then I could type boost post. I could grab my type tool. I press T, click, boost post, and select it, make it white and then move it into the center. There we go. You can see my guide is saying, OK, it's centered, a little bit big. Maybe 13 makes more sense. And I might have to center it again. Um, by the way, you don't have to just click and find those guides. You can click and drag and select two elements. And in our properties, at the very top, we have our alignment tools. Align to the top, align to the center, align to the bottom. So I would do center and then again center over here, vertical and horizontal alignments. So that's a nice way to quickly get things centered. And if I want, I can right click and group things as well so that they always move together. Okay. Mm, and I think this is just a fun thing how to make a heart. I think if you use your polygon tool, you draw your shape and then where it says three, Instead of three, you do the uh, AS, AS2 art for a heart, uh, less than and a three, and it turns it into a little heart. You do this, this little fella. That's me saying thanks for being here. Um, so then give it a bigger border, boing, boing, maybe like that. Grab the move tool and shrink it down. And this is also where we could create um, 
well, we won't get there, but you can create a, a component that has a state that when you tap it, it becomes a red fill. And that's how you do fun little things like that. If we have time, I'll show you. OK, so I'm going to hide my background image. This is as far as we got. But I think you can see it kind of coming together, right? And I think you can see how this can, it can be fun and really take a lot of your time <laughs> too as you try and get all those little interactions. But the back arrow is important here and the full image view is important. So I'm gonna close this preview. Let's make the profile grid as well. And again, we're not gonna go super nuts with it, but we do want Adobe Arizona. So I'll show you one of my favorite uh, ways to copy and to duplicate something. With your selection tool, you hold Alter Option, and you click and drag on whatever you want a copy of. And now I have another Adobe Arizona. And I can pull this bottom handle to make it bigger and put it here. That's too big. What was I thinking? It's a little disorienting because it makes it bigger from the center out instead of to a corner. Um, I could also take my little profile picture. So I'm going to hold Option or Alt on Windows, click and drag, and make that bigger as well. I'm holding Shift when I resize it. And let's just pretend that that's perfect. Um, if you visualize other things like this hamburger menu, that's what we call that, a menu that when you tap it, it expands out. That might just be three really skinny rectangles. Or it could just be three lines that you draw and give a, a larger stroke. So there are many ways to do the same thing when you're designing, as you've probably experienced. Uh, you could also just draw that in Illustrator Photoshop and drop it in as, as an image. Um, ideally, you'd drop it in as a SVG um, file. That way it scales infinitely. OK, let's delete that. And what I'm interested in really showing you um, is the image grid that we have here and how to create a little scrollable page. So let's go ahead and grab our rectangle tool again. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna make a rectangle that's the same size as one of these. So I'll start at the top, click and drag. And I think they are perfect squares. Again, I'll turn the border off. And now I'm gonna use what's called a repeat grid that lets me repeat an element in a grid. And what that has attached to it is the ability to drop in multiple images or a text file. So um, this isn't a good example for that, but I could have a grid of products and I would drop all my products in. And then I could have a text file that has each of the names separated by a return. And it would put each of the names in the same order on the grid. So you could very quickly create your layouts. All right, so in the very top underneath our alignment tools, you'll find the word repeat grid. If you successfully click it, your rectangle will become green with two handles. Those are your repeaters. So if you grab and pull this out, I've made a second and almost a third. And I'm just gonna end at the edge of the artboard. And then I'm going to grab the bottom and I'm gonna pull well beyond my artboard, maybe this far. And then you'll notice my, my gutters are too big. They're making my grid get cut off. And to resize the spacing in between the gutters, you just click and pull them in. And you'll see a little guide in the top of this gutter. It says 18 pixels. I'm going to drop it all the way to, gosh, maybe two. And now I'll pull my grid back out so it goes to the edge. And I'll do the same for this one, just two pixels. So I very quickly created a repeating element. And now what I can do is if you look at that repeat grid folder, I can click on the first image, hold shift, click on the last, and drop it into my grid, into the first tile. And then it's going to take those images and put them into the grid. If it runs out of images, it's just going to repeat them because it understands we're excuse me, making a layout. Now, that's pretty cool. But there's a problem with my preview right now. I can't scroll down to see those other images. And to add scrolling, you need to do two things. The second one usually happens automatically. 
So if I go to my artboard, I'm going to click on its name. It's called profile. You'll see if I hover, it'll show me green how far my content goes down. And blue is the size of the artboard itself. So I can pull this to reveal my other content. And that's the first thing you need to do is make the artboard the same size as your design. And if you look, it already did step two, which is to um, create the viewport height. And the viewport just describes the size of the screen or window that it's being viewed in. So it went ahead and set it to the 844 pixels. So now anything below this dotted blue line will be something that users can scroll to. So if I hit play, I can scroll through this just, and if I were on a phone, I could slide through it. Is that what we do? Tap and drag, drag. Okay. Any questions so far? Cool. Um, so, and what I could do, you might wonder, well, hey, there's usually the, the bar of new post, blah, blah, blah at the bottom. You can also create content that stays where it is. So let me see if I remember how to do that. <laughs> so if I have this white box here with no border and fixed position while scrolling. So if I check that, and now if we preview, when I scroll, that little white bar stays there. And that's where I could have those other calls to action, make a new post, um, search for content, anything else like that. Does that make sense? And it's like, oh, wow, what a problem. But it's fixed just by one single checkbox, which is often what you'll find here in XD. So we could continue designing, adding elements and all that. But the last two things I want to show you is a very short prototyping demo and then sharing out. And then that'll hit us right around 50 minutes or so. Um, we'll have plenty of time for questions or to go on with our day after that. Does that sound okay? Excellent. Okay. So let's go ahead and get out of design mode and into prototype mode. And what you'll see here is the workspace doesn't change, but our outline parts of the workspace do. Sorry, the, the art space doesn't. So what I want to do is create an interaction where if they tap on the prickly pear picture, it takes them to the prickly pear picture. And if they tap on the back arrow, it takes them to the previous screen. So that's our pretty common navigation, right? So if I click on this right now, it's giving me the whole repeat grid. I don't want that. I want the prickly pear. So I double click and now I have just the prickly pear. And I grab this little handle and I'm going to say, hey, you're going to go over here. So I click and say, go to this artboard. And I did get a, a tiny bit ahead of myself. Um, you need to determine your the start of your flow, your home page. And you do that by clicking that little house icon on the artboard. So now I've said profile is the start of my flow. If I wanted it to start a single image, I would create another flow. We don't want to do that. Um, so right now, let's click here on profile. If I go to profile and I click the prickly pair, it takes me to the prickly pair. But I can't do anything else. I can't go back. So let's go ahead and add that as well. So if I click on this, so you can zoom in and see what I'm doing. If I click on this, instead of dragging this back to this artboard, um, Maybe we have a website where they're getting to this picture more than one way. We don't want it to always take them back home. We might want them to just go back to where they were before that. So you can click this and it's just saying something happens when you touch it. And if we look at the right hand side, destination, huh, wait a minute. Okay, not destination, type. <laughs> it says go to previous artboard. And you can also see, not on, not on this previous artboard one, but if we go back to this interaction that we made on the right-hand side, 
we can choose what kind of animation it gives it. So usually uh, a slide is a more common one. Let's see what happens. So if I click the prickly pear, oh, like I did the wrong one. I want to slide left. Let's go back. Okay, so it slides that way. And the previous artboard action, what it does is it takes whatever animation you gave it and it does the opposite. So that's why when I click back, it slides the other way. It's pretty nice. Um, and then you would just keep building out all these interactions until you have all these blue worms going everywhere. Um, do we want to see any other prototyping things, or do we want to see how to share and then have time for questions? It's, it's, it's up to everybody here. <laughs> okay, I saw some yeses to, as a go on, so let's keep going. Um, so I can preview it here just fine, like prickly pear and back. Pretty exciting. But I can also share this out with all of you, with designers and collaborators, stakeholders, all that stuff. That's what the share workspace is. And the share space says, what are you trying to make? Well, you can name it demo 3.10.2. Um, and you can say, what are you giving them? A design review, I believe, gives people the opportunity to experience it and comment on it as well. Development will give the developers more information, um, dimensions, hex, hex code for colors and all that good stuff. Um, presentation just gives you a quick loading, big screen version of your design that you can use to present. Um, I'm not sure what user testing is, I forget, but we can always find out. And then you can customize the viewing experience as well. So let's just do design review. Anyone with the link can see it. You can also put a password or specifically invite other Adobe IDs and create. Here it comes. I'm going to copy it. I'll put it in the chat and I'll open it on mine as well. Okay, and what I, so one thing is I forgot to turn that other layer off. So, but yeah, here's the commenting section. You can put a pin and I can say, what's all this junk, right? And then it would come back to the designer. I'd even, I believe shows up in XD as a pin. Um, it doesn't in design, but let's go back to design and let's look at profile. What's happening here? There we go. Clicked on it. Turn that off. And then when you go back to share, you can update the link, which is going to publish the latest version. So you don't have to share it over and over again. So if I reload, then I'll say, oh, much better, right? Only a little better. It looks unfinished. Um, so anybody can go and comment, pin, and circle things. So that's really nice. If you want somebody to actually design with you at the same time, um, that's actually up here in the top right. And this is where I can click and I can, first I need to save it. And <laughs> I should have saved a long time ago. I always talk about how important it is. Uh, XD demo demon 3.10.22. And here it's going to save to the cloud, which is great. And once it saves and uploads, then it creates this cloud-based document that I can share with someone else. They can open up in real time and design at the same time as me. Um, when I had a, a partner, we would open it up and mess each other's designs up. So eventually. Oh, it's going. Here we go. So I could invite anybody else. If I wanted to invite uh, my boss, I could send it to her. And I could say, Ooh. Looking for some feedback or design with me or something. Um, and we can both have it open. I'm not going to invite her. And that is the kind of teeny tiny overview of XD. We saw a little bit of everything. We didn't go nuts into um, components or more prototyping. But I think hopefully this gives you enough to, to want to play, to want to recreate something. And when you're like, oh, how do I 
make a radial button, then that's something that you can check our site for, or you can look up. Uh, you can also check out plugins. Um, and also, I forget how you get to them, but developers, uh, companies provide design templates as well. So uh, for example, in the assets, there's an iOS design template. And so if I open up iPhone XD, I'm going to have all these in com components that I can drop into my design to have an actual iPhone layout already. Instead of trying to recreate everything, like why should, why should I try and make a Wi-Fi symbol, the time, and the battery if the correct version already exists specifically for me to design with? Um, it's coming. And what I found is these big documents, they can take a moment to open, but once they're open, it, it really doesn't uh, get too sluggish for me, which is really nice because some programs can make your computer pretty unhappy. We're at the last centimeter there. Good opportunity for some water. Yes, Jacqueline? I saw the presentation mode, you can sort of demo like the scrolling and then like clicking and going to the different frames. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to turn that into like a premiere video or like the demonstration of the video as opposed to a live presentation? I think there's actually a record function where it, it records your presentation. Um, and I know it, it records it on the phone, but I, I imagine there should be that. Otherwise, you'd have to use a screen recorder, which isn't, you know, everything has a, in, in the Apple computers, it's QuickTime, and I think on Windows, it's Snippet or something. Um, but that's a great question. Um, so I'm pretty sure it has a built in, but uh, let's see. Play. Oh, this is showing that one. That's fine. Yeah, here's a little record button right here. So even skipping the, the whole presentation mode, you could just open up your preview and record that, which is pretty sweet. Um, and here's those Apple templates. So you can see there's all the goodies here that you might want to create an iOS app, uh, keyboards, emojis uh, here. So, and they're not pictures, they're like, you can drill down and change the word. Word. Um, and you might've heard, it took probably like 10 double clicks to get into that because it's groups within groups within groups. So sometimes you have to really drill down, but you can get there. <laughs> um, so yeah, really fun. Uh, I, I think it's a super fun app to play with. I didn't use it for the first time until I started working here a year ago. And I still, I don't get in there a lot, which is why you'll see, and, you know, I'm, I'm in and out of so many programs that I get lost in them sometimes. But uh, every time I open it, I'm like, oh, I wish I played with this more. <laughs> And that's that's the uh, that's what I've got for you all today. Um, there's plenty of time for questions if we want to check out other things, or um, you know, go on and have a wonderful day. And thank you for joining. It's it's always nice to see everybody. <laughs>